All right, so previously we were covering the x-axis customization. In this video, we will be going through the threshold customization for the time series visual. Now, as always, in the sample report, you have a pre-configured variation of the chart that you can play around with. But for us, we're gonna go to the training view and actually build a chart with these thresholds. So first things first, let's add an instance of the time series visual. Let's just resize it, disable the background and the title. And for the setup, same as always, new date plus the payout on initial series. There we go. One thing that I'm gonna quickly do here is I'm gonna change the color of the primary series because the thresholds are gonna have colors that are close to red, so I don't wanna interfere with that. So I'm just gonna quickly change the outline and the fill color for series one. Now, if we go under the formatting options, right here, almost at the middle of the formatting tab, we can find thresholds. And by default, thresholds are gonna be disabled. So this is something that you have manually enabled within the visual if you wanna use any thresholds. Once I enable it, I'm gonna open up the formatting tab and you can see that the first setting is threshold type. So what we have here are gonna be lines or areas. So let's say the most simple one of the thresholds that you can apply here is just a constant line. Let's say 500,000 and there we go. We have a red line that goes across the chart and showcases us 500,000. In this case, I'm just gonna also adjust the opacity for a little bit and also the thickness so you can see the line a little bit better. There we go. Now, something that's gonna be a little bit more visible and provide some additional context is gonna be threshold area. So if we change the type to an area, you can see that it provides with two values, value from and value to. So what I can essentially do here is, since I know that the chart starts from zero, I'm not gonna touch the value from, I'm just gonna say that everything that goes up until 400,000 is gonna be within my first threshold. I'm gonna keep it on red, but I'm also gonna increase opacity a little bit just to make that threshold area a little bit more prominent. There we go. Now, something else that I will do here is change the position from above to under. What it does is it brings the threshold behind the chart. It allows me to still have a colored background, so those thresholds are still active, but it also allows me to see that it's not interfering with the actual chart that I'm displaying. So afterwards, once we have set up the colors and the opacities, we can scroll down and find show threshold too. We can enable that and it allows me to add the next. In total, the time series visual supports up to four different thresholds. So for this one, we're gonna go for a similar setup. Let's go for area and the values are gonna be starting from 400,000 going up until let's say 1 million. There we go. For this, I'm gonna change the color to something like orange and I'm gonna change also the opacity again so the color is more prominent and bringing it backwards. All right, so we already have two thresholds. Let's just go down and also enable a third one, which is gonna be the last area that we create for this example. So again, area, value. For, in this case, I don't really need the value too because I want that everything that's above a certain value to be highlighted. So here, I'm gonna say everything that goes above 1 million is gonna have the third threshold. For that, I'm gonna change the color to a green. So those are really great examples of what I wanted to have there, for example. Again, adjust the opacity levels for it if it's necessary and change the position from above to under. All right, so now we have essentially a colored background that you define with your thresholds. Now, having columns like this isn't really great because columns are hard to read. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change the column to be a line and I'm also gonna enable some markers. So it's just a lot easier to read the chart. There we go. Now, if we go back to thresholds, we still have one more threshold. So what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna enable it, and instead of using static values for it, I'm gonna use dynamic values. So I'm gonna keep it as a line, but here, instead of value type being constant, I'm gonna change it to be average. So here, I can also choose now the series based upon which I have it. In this case, since I only have series one, I'm gonna use series one. You can also define the value axis if you have series assigned to a different axis, just to make sure that it's reading the values correctly. Now, as far as the customization of this threshold, I'm gonna change the color of it to black. I'm gonna increase the opacity so it's fully non-transparent. 
I'm gonna also increase the line width so you can read it a lot faster. So there we go. Now, the only thing that's really missing here is an actual value because we see the threshold, but we don't understand what is the actual value for it. So for that, I'm gonna enable labels for the threshold. And when you first enable it, you can see that it only showcases the value. But in the settings, you also have an option to define a title for that particular threshold. In this case, it's gonna be average of total payout. There you go. Now, having these flexibilities, you can even customize them even further. You can adjust the label colors, the background colors, shadows, and different other options. One thing though that I wanted to quickly cover is gonna be the horizontal and vertical positioning. So you can choose, for example, if it's gonna be on the left-hand side of the visual or the right-hand side, and it also allows you to choose whether you wanna place it above or under the exact threshold. So you can play around with these settings and see what fits your use case a lot better. Typically, for example, if you have a visual that has a descending sort of value approach to it, it's a lot better to place the threshold labels on the right-hand side because you know that they're not gonna be overlapping with the chart itself. Now, a few additional settings that you have here are gonna be the horizontal and vertical padding. So you can move that label to the light, right or left, up or down a little bit more. And then last things you can change here are gonna be the display units. So that allows you to apply the shortening. And then you have your value decimals to choose how many decimal numbers you have for that particular value. All right, that's gonna be it for the threshold customization and I'll see you in the next video.